Today on Low Buck Garage, I work on my electrical system. I work on my brake system. There we go. I work on my cooling system. This is the wrong one. And then this happens. In case you're just joining this project, let me tell you where we're at so far. I bought a truck for about scrap metal price. Turns out it was a World War II bomb service truck with a civilian cab added. Added dual wheels, both back and front. Oh, I feel water already. Oh, I did water. find some issues with the engine. Lots of water. Found another engine that got it going. Went ahead and put that engine into the truck. I got it running and driving. And now I'm gonna make it better. The bucket seat that came with this truck is in generally pretty good shape. Uh, the upholstery has no rips or tears or really any damage at all. There is one drawback though. There's no adjustability on the height and it sits just a little too high. Now while I could trim off the end to drop down the height the way I want, I figure there might be another solution out there. So I looked into replacing this seat. My first thought was to yank the third row seat out of this Suburban. Now this third row seat is a complete unit with seat belts and everything. Uh, it removes easy. The mounting brackets that hold it in would be simple to recreate. And it's only 48 inches wide. The problem is the cab is 46 inches wide. So I went scrolling on the for sale sites. And I came up with this. It looks like it's just the right width. I don't know if it's going to be good, but it might fit. Apparently this is attached to the floor pretty well. Looks like I got to do a little more cleaning before I actually install this seat. It's been a little while since this has been cleaned out. I found all these support pieces that bolt right on here. I think I got them in the wrong spots because I bolted these down first and then I found ones with a thing sticking up. It's good enough to try for now. I'll fix them later if needed. There's a bunch of cracks I gotta weld up anyway. But let's throw that seat in and see what happens. All right. That's not half bad. I started working on electrics, installing the signal light and all that, and I realized I need better access to the back of the dash. So pretty much everything I can take out, I'm taking out, including this little gauge panel. Looks like there's a bolt right about there. I'm gonna try to undo that. I bet there's one on the other side. Huh, it's actually unscrewing. I'm doing these bolts by feel. Apparently I started undoing gauges and things instead of the dashboard. This time I'm gonna try to get the right bolts and take those out. I think, I think this might be it. You guys might be laughing at me right now as you're looking in the screen and I'm undoing another gauge, but hopefully this actually does it. See, there we go. That was better. Well, apparently the reason speedometer wasn't working is there is no cable whatsoever hooked to it. That could be the issue. I did hook up my temperature gauge, that didn't work. And the ammeters, uh, I'm not gonna run lots of juice to these wires. We're just gonna take those out. Well, I'm trying to take the switches out. The nuts started to turn now they just turn the barrel. There we go. Problem solved. Now working on this truck, I basically am starting from ground zero on the electrics. All the wire that was there was frayed. And these headlights, it's so bad, there isn't even any insulation flaking off. There is no insulation at all, just bare wires. The lights that are there, I'm not sure if they work. Tail lights didn't even have any. Uh, there's a lot of things um, that are lacking in that truck. So I'm just going to go end to end and rewire the whole thing and put all new lights and things like that on it. There's a company I recently worked with on my car trailer project uh, called Nylite. I was reasonably happy with lights. They worked well. The quality is about what you expect for the price and the price was extremely reasonable. Uh, the quality control wasn't perfect. The hardware was weak, but the lights worked well. 
Even though the installation was a little more complicated than I expected, by the end of the video I was happy with it. And strangely enough, after they saw the video, that company apparently was happy with it because they asked me if I wanted any more stuff. I knew this truck was going to need all new lights, so I started scrolling through their online catalog and doing some shopping. I found one particular product that seemed to absolutely fit. Now originally the chassis was from a bomb service truck, which was made for servicing bombs in World War II. This place makes floodlights in a bomb shape. They call it rocket shaped, but to me, that's a bomb shaped fog light. So this right here made me realize I have to work with these people because this bomb truck needs bomb lights. There's just no way around it. These are one of the more expensive products. They're like 40 bucks each, but they're heavy. That's uh, I don't know if you can hear it. There's a lot of metal here. There's some serious mass to it. So I'm hoping the quality is good. It feels pretty good. And of course, you can't have just one. I had to get two. This thing definitely needs a pair of bombs on it somewhere. Yeah, it looks like it has too many eyes at this point. The metal where the grill mounts, it's like up here. I just noticed, on this one, the label was put on upside down. The other side's right though. 2.15 amps or so. So a switch could easily handle that. There's no need for relays or anything like that. They told me just to let them know what I wanted, so I went a little bit crazy here. Some of the stuff I definitely needed, like tail lights. They have a few different styles. I want the standard Jeep replacement LED tail light. It's the reverse lights, which is better than a regular trailer light. Normally you don't get those integrated. It's got the license plate light underneath. We got a pair. Um, for some reason, both of them have a place for a license plate light. I think I could turn them this way and point them both towards the center. That might work. There's a nice big flat plate here where I could mount these lights. The license plate wouldn't really go there because it has this giant chunk of steel for towing. But this giant chunk of steel is in pretty sad shape. 0.16 amps, 0.09 amps, 0.07 amps. Those do not draw much use at all. I could run real thin wire to them if I wanted. We've got work lights, because you know, we can't just have the fog lights going forward. We need cab lights, bed lights, I don't know, point them wherever. That's definitely aluminum housing. You can feel it's cold. It's not plastic. So they got a nice little heat sink on the back. We'll see how these work. I'll put a link to all this stuff so you can actually see current prices. 0.71 amps. Now there were little lights on the side. I called them turn signals and they weren't. Now these are the ones that are not turn signals. The truck didn't have turn signals, but they're in the position where a turn signal would be. So I'm gonna turn them into turn signals. But I want a light inside them to light up. And it looked like these little three quarter inch lights would fit inside. Uh, and I can just uh, have it glow through the lens or something. I'll figure that out. But these things came in a 10 pack. So I've got plenty. 0 0.04 amps. That is tiny. And you can almost hook this up to a potato and be fine. Now that's it as far as lighting goes. But they also sell other stuff like trailer light harnesses. But here's all my wire for all my turn signals and running lights. Boom, done. Then I've got to figure out how to turn on all the accessories. Here's my first plan. Good old switches. They're just a standard on off toggle switch, single pole, single throw, nothing special. But they do have the little rubber boot to make them waterproof. But then I realized they sell a lot more than just regular switches. So I started scrolling through a little further. Came up with this. Now this is a gang of switches. And basically you put power to the whole batch and then each of these switches powers up one of these wires. Also, this comes with nifty stickers. Now there's indicator lights on this will actually turn on when the accessory is on. And it looks like the light will actually go through these so your little sticker lights up with whatever it is. Never worked with something this fancy. Trying this one out, it's all powered up now. And then as you turn things on, the switches illuminate, the bottom still stays illuminated, and the voltmeter's on. So I have 12.6 volts. Now one other thing I noticed, this is facing up. We have the label on top. We have their logo on top. We have the LEDs facing upwards. The word that says voltmeter is upside down. And the cap opens 
well, I'll call it the wrong way. This is actually a real nice housing. It's all metal. The component quality and all that, that seems pretty good. We've got a whole gang of switches. They're all jumpered together. And uh, that all looks pretty nice. That nut was barely even finger tight. So we can slide that around. Now it actually is incorrectly. Let's put this back together. You know, I probably should put the grill on and then figure out where to put these. That'll be a better way to do it. We're going to do a quick test here. If you've ever gotten glasses or been to the eye doctor before, you might be familiar with this one. The factory grill, number one. Or number two. Number one. Or number two. Now obviously this grill gives a lot of support and does better protection for the lights and all that. But I almost think it looks better without it. I don't actually really need this kind of protection because I don't have any trees to drive through. I might just leave this off. I wonder what else we could do there. Eventually we're going to need to do something with this master cylinder here. So let's open it up and see what we got. Then we can make some decisions. Now the end of the line doesn't look horribly rusty. So I'm going to see if I can pop this cap off. Well, I got this back nut to turn, but every time I turn it, it springs back. I think we're going to take this entire unit out to, in order to put that in a vise and spin it around a little more. Well, what we have here is a self-tightening nut. Let's try the ratchet. There it goes. I just heard it crack. There's the spring. It's moving. That's a good sign. It's blue. That's weird. That's in there pretty good. I really like that you can go straight through this whole thing. That's handy. No amount of honing is going to save this cylinder. This thing is done. In theory, it could be bored and sleeved, but there's not really much point in that when you can buy a brand new unit for $69. So, master cylinder's all set. With the floor missing here, I can get right to this HydroVac unit to make it easy to bleed now that I have a new master cylinder. But, better yet, there's no lines hooked to it. So, this has been completely disconnected and bypassed already. So I don't even have to worry about figuring out if this is good or bad. I know it's bad, so I can just ignore it. That makes my life easier. I was getting a pedal until I heard a pop and leaking. Now I have a brake line to replace. It looks like this is a standard steel line that popped. So that's easy. We can make up one of those. Well, here's a line that broke. It's right in that cross member that was full of dirt when I got the truck. So I probably just trapped water and rusted it right through. I gotta buy a new line anyway. If I can break this off right here, I could put a six point box end or socket or something on it, get a little more power to it. So let's try that. There we go. Problem solved. An added bonus to snapping off my brake lines is I can now measure them. When I was at the parts store getting some brake line, I also picked up a new stop switch. Um, I was actually looking into the different kinds available. There's a lot of different ends. But I also ran across a lot of stories about people talking about the plastic cap blowing out and losing all your fluid. So I went with the uh, Standard Motor Products SLS uh, 27. I know bullet connectors will fit that, and uh, Standard Motor Products is generally a pretty good reputation for quality. So just pop this out, put this one in, and I just realized a major problem. These connectors are going directly next to my brake linkage. So this was not a good choice. Go with some other terminal on the end. I think a screw terminal with a ring end that comes out the side would be a better choice. Last fitting in this new line. And then, I'm back to where I was a few hours ago, working on bleeding the brakes. Well, I haven't heard anything pop so far. 
and we're starting to build up pressure again. Somewhere right about there, there's a bleeder. I gotta dig it out. And of course, every single bleeder's clogged. Just a little bit of buildup. There it is. We've hit a milestone. Check this out. This brake pedal right here feels like it might actually work. I realized the linkage that interferes when we put in connectors on this brake switch is uh, for the electric brake controller. I'm not going to run electric brakes on anything I'm towing behind this. Problem solved. Well, now I've got to figure out what to do with the air filter situation. Well, this one is nice and waterproof. It's somewhat restrictive. And it's not even that waterproof because there's holes in it. Now this is a stock style air filter. It's an oil bath type, so you have to put oil on the bottom. I've had trouble with these leaking in the past. This one probably doesn't leak because it's covered in oil. But the problem is the base. That doesn't fit the carburetor that I have. It's the wrong diameter. Between this vehicle and the spare engine I got, I have a few of these. Got some options. I also got this piece. I don't know where this came from, but it is a different style base and it does fit. So I can use that on the bottom, but then I need some filtering thing up here. I picked up this off of eBay. It's a Wix uh, 42193. It's got a lot of filter in a compact package and that could fit on top. Now I looked at my pile of old style filters. This one has uh, a few little rust issues. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Maybe even a coat of paint. Didn't actually have a coupling nut, so I just went ahead and made one. I didn't have any threaded rod either, so we're gonna make some of that too. About one thumb width off. Still a stubby carriage bolt left. There we go. We got air filtration. It's got a lot of the dash apart, it's starting to put in the wiring. And I realized I've got to get that window crank working. And I probably want to do it before I put the wires in. I've been soaking this for a few weeks, so I was hoping it would turn. But that is not turning either direction. So, let's look into our alternate options. If I push on this entire unit, it moves the glass. And that actually pops out enough I can see how it attaches. And I'm seeing a Phillips head screw there. The screwdriver didn't work, so we're going to try the next level here. This is the drive unit. That end here is what bolts to the windshield. You drive with that gear of the window crank. It drives this gear, and that turns this sprocket, which goes in these teeth. And it's a curved piece of metal, like a measuring tape, so it can flex this way, but also can push. And that's what holds the windshield open. So now I got it apart, I can really soak it in penetrating oil and get this freed up. In the meantime, I could do this. Now this is some serious ventilation. I have a big spool of red wire, so I'm using all red wires going to the ignition switch. But to tell them apart, I'm banding both ends. So straight red is my battery in. Red with a yellow band is for spark, that's my ignition. Red with a green band is for go, that's the starter. And red with a blue band is for accessory, because accessories are cool. But it's actually reasonably easy to get to these when you can have your hand right here. Now here's the original gas tank. I never tried to hook it up, and so I have no idea what's in there, but I don't expect there's anything good. I like the bailing wire hose hangers. Save that bailing wire for later. I'll need that. And nothing coming out here. Hey, this is kind of cool. They actually use bailing wire as a hose clamp. That's nice. Okay, looks like nothing in the tank. It actually look like, doesn't look like that much debris in here. Kind of surprised. Let's just pull this whole fuel line out. Now it really seemed odd to me that the fuel pickup would be hanging at the bottom of the tank right near the drive shaft. I don't think that was a fuel pickup. I think that was a drain and someone added a line. Because I found a line over here that goes into the side of the tank and is totally protected by the frame rail looks like it goes to a sediment bowl filter type thing down there and some other valve here. I'm thinking there's likely an internal issue inside this tank, which is why they bypass this. 
Obviously this original fuel line was bypassed for a reason. They intended that to stay closed. So I'm gonna cut off the end and reconnect it because um, I wanna use it. Now I don't actually know what's wrong with it. I'm just gonna start connecting one part at a time, starting with the end here, and uh, I'll work my way backwards. I've got the pump hooked to the original line with a clear fuel filter so you can see what kind of debris go in there. And I'm gonna disconnect the line at the next junction, which is this uh, sediment bowl filter type deal. And we're gonna disconnect this here. And we got a compression fitting here, which is perfect for attaching a rubber line. We can run that fuel line right along the bottom edge of the door into this convenient access hole in the bed to our standard boat tank. So we've got a fuel system hooked up. It's not even on the front fender anymore. Now I'm getting all my wiring and fuse boxes set up and uh, gonna install some of these nifty little stickers that came with the fuse boxes, which for some reason have a big magic marker line across them when I got them. Good thing I don't have wipers. I wouldn't be able to use that label. Accessory, need that one. Kind of surprised to look through all of these. I don't see a single one for battery or ignition. They have spedder lights, but no ignition or battery. Hazard, that'll be ignition on. I'm gonna get some kind of cooling fan on this engine. And uh, the problem I had is the pilot on this old stove bowl is a bigger diameter than they use these days. So I thought I had a solution. I found a one inch thick spacer that had the modern size pilot on the end and slots so my larger bolt pattern will fit. And then it has a large diameter on the back side. This is actually too big. This is about one and three sixteenths. I forgot I could use a piece of tubing and sleeve it down. But it doesn't work. That's not deep enough. When I put it on there, I can't actually have this go flush to the pulley. I'm gonna bore out that hole to the right size and I probably don't even need to use a sleeve at that point. And here's my final result. That bore there should be the right size. Now that fits just right. So now we can attach a modern fan to this old style water pump. But I actually bought a fan. This is the wrong one. It's all molded plastic. It's real lightweight. Uh, the blades are flexible. It also has slotted holes. So it fit my larger diameter bolt circle. I went with the biggest size they had because all the sizes were the same price and they're all pretty cheap. It doesn't fit. The fan blade just barely scrapes that harmonic balancer. You know when people say, don't try this at home? I assume what they mean is, this is a potentially bad idea, and don't sue me, because probably nine times out of 10, this is gonna go really wrong. That's the situation we're in here. I've got a water pump hooked into my bandsaw, and I got the blade on there. That way it rotates around the same point. I've got a stop, so all the blades are the same length. I've got the blade marked where it's gonna hit, and uh, we're just gonna trim these off a little. I probably wouldn't try this if this was a metal blade, but a plastic one, yeah, we'll give it a shot. One down, five to go. On to the last one. So far the only change I had to make is I had to bolt the fan to the water pump because it started popping off that centerpiece. Other than that, this has actually been working. The started out life as an 18 inch fan. Now we're down to around 15. The way the original blades were curved, I think that if I bought a 16, it would have cleared in this curvature. We got our fan in place. We've got a little over an inch of clearance to the radiator. So uh, I think we're in real good shape with the positioning. The clearance, the harmonic balancer is real good. Actually, I probably shouldn't have cut it as far. I could have cut a lot less, but we'll definitely clear now. I'm not sure how much juice a six volt starter solenoid takes running on 12, but I know for sure it's more than 30 because I pop fuses like crazy. I've got a relay I can use on that starter, but it has no mounting tab. But I did find some copper strap material. Found a pre-used, already crimped spade connector. All right, now the copper's wrapped around. There we go. Now we take this and hook it up to one of the coil terminals. Now that copper tab I added acts as both the ground and locates it in place. And now we might have a turnkey vehicle.
time for our brake test. We have working brakes. Means we need working brake lights. This whole rear cross member is pretty mangled. I think I'm gonna have to cut it anyway in order to straighten it and then re-weld it back up. So I'm gonna knock out this. I thought it'd be easy. Didn't quite go as planned. I brought it close to the shop. We're gonna try this. This thing's just the right height. You can sit comfortably, plenty of headroom, got a backrest. Backrest is a little lumpy, it's not too bad. New headlights in with a new connector. Now these lights aren't gonna do me any good even if I got them working, those lenses are not gonna have light go through them, so not much point in that. So let's take them apart and see what we can do to turn them into signal lights. There's chunks falling out, that's a good sign. Yeah, that lens is not gonna do us any good at all. And there's no bulb in it. Perfect. Now this whole thing is just kind of falling apart in my hands as I work with it. Got the little lens out. So now I have a housing that I can do something with. This one's a first for me. I've never taken a brand new light and put it into a belt sander before. I wonder how much you can take off before it stops working. And by setting the size, I was able to fit three of those LEDs inside where the original lens was. That'll be triple the brightness of a single one. So we're just going to uh, put a few dabs of silicone to hold them in place. I'm using clear in case I make a mess I can still see out of it. Let this dry and then we'll see what we got. These leftover grommets from those little LED lights are great. They work perfect for running wires through holes in the firewall. Now this whole light over here is an extra light. It's only on this one side. And when I first looked at it I thought it might be some kind of driving light. A lot of people told me that it's missing a cover and it should have a cover pointing it downwards and um, it was more for military use. The thing is, I don't see anywhere to actually attach a cover. Like if there was supposed to be a cover that's missing, there's no evidence of it at all. And it has this nice little trim ring that looks like it's supposed to be there. I'm not sure what the deal is. But I'm going to hook it up and uh, see if we get light out of it at least. Got the good old alligator clips going. Let's see what we got. Absolutely nothing. All right, so there's this. Now this definitely looks like it's meant to be replaced in one unit. It's crimped over here. But it also looks like someone had peeled it apart once. So uh, the lens isn't sealed on there. Let's peel it apart again. Well, I got it apart without any damage, which is nice, but this bulb is definitely not replaceable. There's no way to actually turn this. It appears the bottom of the bulb is actually this section. It's stuck through and soldered in place. Um, and then the terminal is actually part of the bulb itself, maybe. It's going to take me a little while to figure out what to do with this and how to replace it. Because I do want to get this working again, but I'm not sure how quite yet. However, I was digging through my stash of stuff and found these lights, which I just recently acquired with a big pile of metal in my car trailer trip. And uh, they look like the same size. It's even got the right notch and everything. It actually looks like it's meant for this holder. I'm pretty happy with the way this little triple LED light turned out. And I realized with three bulbs, I could have one be my running and parking lights, and the other two be the signal light. That means I had to run two wires inside that hole that was meant for one, so I had to find the tiniest wire I could in my used wire harness stash. I couldn't really be picky with the colors. But I'm going to have two bulbs wired into one, one into the other, so the signal light is going to be twice as bright as the running light. I think that'll work out okay. Now that all the front lights are hooked on, I can put on the grill. Now I posted the grill or no grill question on my Facebook page. The overwhelming opinion was put the grill back on. A few people suggested painting it, and I thought about that. The one thing I didn't like about the grill is it seemed to detract from the otherwise pristine front end. So I went ahead and painted it a darker color, and that way uh, it blends in a little better. While I was knocking off the loose paint, I was expecting to find olive drab under the yellow. That's distinctly blue. And looking around, there's other spots. This was definitely blue before it was yellow. 
It's another layer to the mystery of this truck. So I embraced the rust, painted it brown, kind of blends in with the background a little more now. Let me know what you think. I can always repaint it again if needed, or make a new grill if needed. For now, this one will work, and the fenders are sturdy again. So far, so good. Let's check the back. We may be functional. And I don't know if you noticed, I got a plate. It's road legal too. Another day, another wire. Yesterday I finished up the base wiring to get all the important stuff done. Headlights and taillights and all that. Uh, today I'm working on accessories. I'm looking for places to mount this box. So I think I'm going to mount this box right here. Now if I take out this panel, I can run the wires right through. So we're going to pop this out and see what's behind there. Here's there's rust behind there. Oh hey, there's a mouse house. I think I need the vacuum again. I've evicted all the mice I could find so far. I also vacuumed up a piece of the cab, but we won't worry about that. Looks like there's a vacuum line, so I'm assuming this is a vacuum operated motor. The controls are actually directly connected to the wiper motor itself, and you have access to the wiper motor from the cab with just the levers coming through. Kind of neat system. Two of the screws that held that cover plate up have to line up perfectly with holes in this mounting bracket. So I didn't even need to drill a hole, I'm just bolting it in with the factory hardware. I've got all the connections I need made. I got two spare switches, I just capped off the wires. It was real nice having this turned up so I can get to the back. And once I tuck those in, I can turn it down and lock it in place where I want it. All I have to do is lock down these little side bolts and it'll stay there. We can turn it to accessory. Everything fires up. I'm running 13 volts and let's turn some stuff on. It's time to drop the bomb on this truck. Ah, uh, that was bad. I'm gonna have to edit that out. Especially have to edit it out if I say these lights are the bomb. Let me show you the layout and what I got. Now I have an interior light. Normally they're done with a door switch. This truck doesn't have door switches. So I put the first switch you get to, turns on your interior light. I use one of those work lights, which works great. You can even see my floor. The light actually shines through the sticker. Uh, this one is that auxiliary light that was on the fender. This one is the bomb lights. This one is the cargo light. And this one is the backup lights. Here's the worm gear drive that makes the windshield go in and out. A little bit of soaking and some tapping. Now, I don't actually have the handle for it. That has to go through the dashboard to actually get to turning it from inside. I'm just gonna crank it all the way open right now and install it in the open position because I like windshields open. It's better that way. I don't know if I'm ever going to put these gauges in. I like this kind of access. Now the broken windshield isn't as big of an issue because I can see right below it. That's kind of nice. Now I think I'm going to tackle the hood next. Uh, you can see bolts broke off on this hinge. Unfortunately, they're in this hinge. That's a bit of a problem. Because they left exit wounds when it left the body. So I'm going to have to straighten that out a little bit. Luckily the windshield helps. I can put my dolly in from the inside through the gaping hole where the gauges used to be, my hammer through where the windshield used to be. Oh, this straightened out in no time. Okay, we're gonna take this for a ride. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we can take off a second.
took it out on the road. Uh, that was fun. Still got a little bit of adrenaline going. It's a little bit hairy. It did darts around a little bit, but uh, it worked. It went, it stopped. The brakes worked. The transmission worked. Um, everything went pretty well. I actually could go somewhere in this thing now. I was aiming to have this video done two days ago, but I just kept on having fun and doing more stuff to this truck. I wasn't actually planning on a heavy drive on the road. I was just going to get all the stuff ready to go. But uh, once the brakes started working and things started coming together, I had to finish it up. And by finished, I mean working. There's still more stuff to do. I need minor things like, you know, a floor, uh, attach the seat, a charging system, minor stuff. But the basics are there. Now I've got a lot of incentive to keep going. Hope you guys are having fun in your projects too, and we'll see you next time. Turn on the interior light. All right, it's after dark. We got to park this thing. Someday I got to work at the starter a little too. It gets going eventually. All right. Headlights. Release to get to reverse. Oh, backup lights. There we go. Looks like a regular vehicle. Kind of weird. Makes me a little nervous. Alright. That's it.